the silver price on March 15th of 2024. Wouldn't you like to know, one year from now, what will the silver price be? We need your help. We want you to be part of this because today we have a special treat and you're going to be shocked what you learn about the ability to predict the silver price one year out. Hey everybody, it's Ron from Ron's Basement, live on the log flume. Say hi, girls. Hi. We need you to go to the comments below. Leave your best estimate, reasonable estimate, as to where you think the silver price will be in one year. Do it in dollars and cents, but you might be asking, why? How can this help? Well, we have a data scientist amongst us. Yes, a fellow basement dweller who's a high-level data scientist who's going to teach us about a method that he's going to apply to your estimate that just might give us a accurate glimpse of where the silver price could be in one year. I've talked too much. I want to introduce you to a fellow basement dweller, Don Wedding. Don, welcome to Ron's Basement. Thanks a lot, Ron. I'm a longtime viewer of your show, and I'm excited to be here, and hopefully we can uh, help figure out what the price of silver is going to be in 2025. That's right. March 15th, 2025. And, and we will revisit this estimate, but we'll also revisit on March 15th of 2025 to see how close we came. But what's super interesting to me is you have this, uh, the, the, this method called, is it wisdom of the crowd? Can you share with us a little bit about that? And then later, folks, we are going to learn about Don because this guy is super smart and has some unbelievable credentials but tell the tell the crowd that's joining us right now your fellow basement dwellers about the wisdom of the crowd okay well the wisdom of the crowd is actually a, a widely used technique in um they use it in politics they use it in marketing they use it in many many different areas the the back story of it is back in i believe this is and and don't, don't quote me on the exact dates here, but it was like, I believe 1906, there was a famous statistician named Sir Francis Galton. And he was at a county fair in, I believe, Plymouth, England. And they had a, like eight or you know, seven, 800 people there. And they had a contest to see who could guess the weight of a cow. And they said, okay, everybody guess this cow's weight. And the person who came closest would get to win the cow. And it, Incidentally, I got a cow here, Ron. Um, <laughs> That's right. I, I didn't even realize when I put it on there that it was uh, related to Sir Francis Galton. But anyways, um, so, so what happened was nobody came even close to the true weight of the cow, which was something like 1,200 pounds. And um, so, but after the contest was over, Sir Francis Galton being a statistician, did some analysis and he averaged up everybody's um, prediction and he found out that even though everybody was wrong, the people who, when averaged all together, these people were actually within 1% of the true weight of the cow. So that uh, started his, um, his theory on what's called the wisdom of the crowd, which basically it goes to... Um, everybody has an equal probability of being low as they do high. And when you average it together, you get close to the true value. The more people who guess theoretically, the closer we're going to get to the true value. Um, the one caveat is this is a cow and these people are all staring at cows. They can see it. What we're going to do is we're going to try to predict this or, or apply this to predicting the future, which might be a lot more difficult. A big jar of jelly beans is concrete. You can see it. Whereas now we're going to try to look in our crystal ball and figure out what's going to happen in the future. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not uh, certain that this is going to work or not, but I, I think it would be an interesting um, uh, exercise for us to try. So you're you're telling me uh, that if our fellow basement dwellers are willing to invest the 16 seconds it's going to take to go down below to the comment section and put in a reasonable 
uh, prediction as to where they see silver going a year from now, we're going to say March 15th of 2025, mm -hmm. then you can apply some uh, statistical magic. You're a data scientist and, and come up with what we think could be the wisdom of the crowd. Uh, and I understand, like you said, right, that there's a difference between looking at something concrete and making an estimate as to weight or quantity. Mm -hmm. But I think it's worth trying to look mm -hmm. out into the future with the price of silver in particular. Uh, and I want to throw in that uh, on March 15th of 2025, we'll come back and do a drawing, a random drawing from all the comments that are that are in the comments to this video. And I'll give that person this American Silver Eagle right here. Well, okay, that sounds good. And Ron, do you think we can also try to have them uh, uh, also predict the price of gold as well as silver? Uh, yes, if they like, that would be wonderful, right? But put put your put write the word gold in your best estimate for what you see, March 15, 2025, and write the word silver and put your best estimate again for March 15, 2025. And, and my reason for doing that is I believe that most of your basement dwellers love silver and they're extremely knowledgeable on it, but probably less so on gold. So I'm curious if the, the, the skill set or the knowledge of silver is going to make their predictions more accurate or less accurate as opposed to gold. Um, because, you know, there's also everybody here obviously wants silver to, to go through the, the roof and... Um, mm -hmm. And it doesn't. So, I mean, I'm curious if also our, there, we may have a bias built in that, you know, we all wishful thinking that it's that we're all going to be rich tomorrow. So that's right. my reason for uh, right. maybe throwing right. in a secondary metal. This wisdom of the crowd, I don't know if you call it a system or a, uh, or a technique. Uh, it would be a technique. technique. Yeah, technique. Thank you. Is fascinating. Uh, I dug in and did some research, and I mean, it really can work. If we have everyone give us that reasonable prediction for both silver and gold, um, it'll be super fascinating to see what the wisdom of the crowd comes up with. And I'm particularly interested to see how this turns out, because I can tell you one thing for sure about that viewer who's here with us now, Don, right? It's you and I, but we've got a third person, the most important person, the viewer, and that is that they are intelligent, right? The the information I get from YouTube uh, indicates to me that we have a high-end clientele here in Ron's basement. So I think we can come up with some accurate estimates. And on top of that, uh, the guy who's going to be working on this, Don, uh, you've got quite a background yourself. I'm going to invite you to please briefly brag about yourself so our viewer knows who's going to be digging into these numbers. Well, okay, Ron. Um, so my uh, background is I'm an engineer by trade, and I got into uh, statistics and data science, where data science is basically the application of practical statistics, machine learning techniques, use of computers uh, to do a lot of your statistical and predictive modeling. Um, I've been doing this in the banking industry. I started in the banking industry in 2000 and have been uh, in this field, insurance, marketing, variety of different areas, um, applying this for the last quarter of a century. And currently I work as a consultant. Um, I have my own consulting company, a one-man show, uh, oops, DKW Analytics. Um, and uh, when I'm not doing analytics for companies, I also teach at Northwestern University. I work in their uh data science master's degree program. So I teach machine learning um, there as well. So you're, you're going to be applying a variety of analytical tools to the sample size. And uh, I know I can't wait to see what you come up with. Uh, but you're also a person who's very passionate about silver and gold as well. Yeah, it's fascinating to me. I, I, I get in the morning, I wake up, I pour myself a cup of coffee and I sit in front of the, the YouTube and I watch, watch your show. I watch a, a few of the other shows and it, I just can't watch this enough. And um, yeah. it just, you know, it, it's a quick way to drive my wife running from the room. She just, you know, <laughs> apparently she, she lacks my um, 
my enthusiasm when it comes to uh, to the precious metals. But I, I find this stuff fascinating, and I also like to study um, economic trends. It's just sort of a hobby of mine. And so, um, Ron, you're the first guy I watch in the morning. Oh Would boy, you? I I I I I apologize for that in advance. So. Hey, real quickly, Don, I just want to say thank you to my channel sponsors that make these videos possible. I want to say thank you to Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X. If you just don't want to estimate the price of silver, or if you think it's going to be higher on uh, March 15th of 2025, and you're thinking about getting yourself some silver, gold, or platinum, go check out Pimbex. Throw them into the mix if you're shopping online. Uh, they have the best prices, the best service, and great selection. It's a company that I work with, but you need to find out for yourself. And I want to say thank you to Fortuna Silver. They just announced their fourth quarter earnings this morning, and uh, things are looking very bright for Fortuna. I'll have Jorge Ganoza, the CEO, on for an interview later uh, this week, which will be published next week. You can check them out at fortunasilver.com. And, of course, our friends at First Mining Gold, Canadian gold developer with not one, but two exciting 5 million ounce gold development projects in the permitting phase in Canada. They're going to be ready to go when the big gold miners need to fill their pipeline with new projects. Back to you, Don. Did I forget to mention anything uh, to, our, to our viewer today? So at this point, we're asking people, go down below to the comment section. Write the word silver. What do you think the silver price will be on March 15, 2025? And do the same for gold. Don's going to be working hard to get all this together. And then we're going we're gonna to know for sure what the silver and gold price are going to be uh, in March of uh, 2025. That sounds good, Ron. Um, just out of curiosity, you said you're going to do a random drawing. Um, should they put some kind of a, a, a word in there, like predict or something like that, so that you know to only select those uh, predictions? No, I think if they just write silver and write their silver estimate and gold and their gold estimate, I'll be able to then, I have a random comment picker that will go through all the comments. And the only thing I'll ask is, you know, guys, please be reasonable, right? <laughs> and I know you will. So, uh, but give us your, you know, if you really thought you could go out a year in the future and pull up uh, uh, Pimbeck's website and see what the silver and gold price is, what, what would you see? Well, I do have techniques if there are, you know, somebody thinks that it's going to be, you know, a billion dollars or something like that. I have ways of dealing with that as well. But, um, you know, any. Any prediction, if you really think it's a billion dollars, you can put it in there. But I would hope, <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to bias the audience. If you, you know, you put what you think, but I have yeah. a lot of different techniques and we'll, we'll come up with several different predictions. I am so excited. Don, on behalf of myself, on behalf of the viewer, I really want to say thank you because, you know, you usually charge big money to do this type of analysis. Again, uh, Don's a data scientist. If any of you out there need any statistical analysis type work done, uh, you can get, get in touch with Don. What's the name of your company again, Don? It's uh, DKW. That's my initials, Donald K. Wedding. So it's DKW Analytics and um, I have a website that's, uh, well, it's currently down, but it'll be up again shortly, uh, dkwanalytics.com. Um, okay. All the basement dwellers are important people, but mm -hmm. I can tell you, we've got some, you know, business owners, uh, executives, uh, people of, you know, of all uh, higher level uh, individuals watching. So yeah, if you guys need some some uh, some some data science work, uh, get in touch or send me an email. I can get you in touch with Don, and uh, we're excited to see uh, what kind of uh, statistical magic we can work up with these silver and gold predictions. Well, it's it's very kind for you to give me the plug there, Ron. But I'm I'm just doing this because I I absolutely am fascinated by this, and I and I love your show, big fan. Yeah, I want to throw in. Don did not request that I gave them gave him that plug, but my uh, interactions with Don are have been uh, really great. So I'm more than happy. You know, us basement dwellers, we stick together, Don. So uh, you never know what might happen, and we'll uh, we'll check back in maybe like in six weeks, eight weeks, and give the the big results. Does that sound like a plan? 
Oh, it sounds like a plan. And incidentally, you're Ron's basement. This is my basement. So this is Don's basement. So <laughs> only one letter off. One letter and three teddy bears, but you've got a stuffed bowl. So, all God, right, Don, thank my, you. I, I borrowed this from my wife. Yeah, well, that's right. We borrow all our stuffed animals from our wives, right? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I guess so. It's, it's not mine. Trust me. Right, right on. All right, Don, thank you. We'll see you soon. You'll be good. Thank you so much, Ron.